We're here right in the middle of Yale University with John Cinque and with Joe Visconti. And they've got something to talk about here at Yale today. John, how long have you been a firefighter? Uh, career firefighter for 22 years. Volunteer for 10 before that. East Haven? Uh, East Haven Fire Department, because I'm a career firefighter. Yeah, my uncle was the deputy chief of Hartford Fire Department. I know that. Yeah. Years. My brother was a firefighter in Hartford. Okay. Engine 8 on Park yeah. Street. During the 80s, yeah. pretty bad time. Yeah, absolutely. And I have another uncle that was a Hartford firefighter. So, uh, yeah. It's a good job. It's a great Tell job. me about what one of your challenges right now. Pretty much right now, it's uh, because of the economy. There's no, the, the budgets are being slashed. That is a huge problem. Trying to trying to maintain equipment, get new equipment. That's, uh, you know, personnel-wise, it's, it's a huge challenge. I've got a lot of communications from volunteer fighter guys across the state. Right. I'm going to be meeting Bruce. What do you know about them? Their challenges versus yours? Well, I was I was a volunteer for 10 years prior to getting onto the career department. Um, I grew up in Guilford. I was actually a volunteer with the Guilford Fire Department. Um, a lot of things have changed since in the last 22 years since I you know joined or joined the career ranks. Right. Uh, but as volunteers, the hard part now is training keeping up with because a volunteer firefighter needs to have the same qualifications as a career as a career firefighter and there's no time. Who's hustling to get to get a job? Who's hustling to keep their job? Um, and just the dynamics of now you have two parents working quite a bit. You know, the days of a, a single parent, you know, the, the the father going out to work and the mother being home taking care of the children, yeah. those are done. Um, How's the, and, how's the stress work? Volunteer versus vol non volunteer when you were young? Um, how's the, the stress same, activity? It's the same amount of stress. Uh, you know, the, 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 the call volume is going is going up exponentially. Uh, when I when I originally started on the department twenty two years ago, um, our call volume was about sixteen hundred runs a year. Last year we topped out over six thousand runs for the year. Wow. Small little town like you say. Wow. So we're busy. Um, and with the, I've noticed over the years now the the, the actual um, the call volume that we're getting. We do a lot of social services work now. A lot of a lot of departments do EMS. We do EMS where I work, and just I've seen the breakdown of the family unit. The 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 the, the pervasiveness of drugs is, is is a huge problem now, um, and it's it really is. Can be heartbreaking some of some of those situations that so, you see. So, but most people think the fire department there's a fire alarm going off, there's a fire, yeah. and it's not the social. No, it's a, we you are everything from uh, people who just sometimes there are actually sometimes you go to a, you, you go to an alarm, we call it an alarm, you go you go to one to call, and you're talking to a lot of times are elderly, they have nobody else. Sometimes you're just there, and it turns out they're just lonely. Wow. And you know, it happens a lot, and and, and the the services that are available for the vast majority of people seems to be dwindling down. Um, lack of money. You know, if we had a decent economy, there'd be more money flowing into programs. But who has money anymore? You know, I'm fortunate. I I pray. I, I thank God every day for my job. I've been very fortunate and very blessed for my job. Um, not everybody in, in the public service arena is thankful for their job. You know, they. I know some people that say, "Me, me, me. I, I, I deserve this," right. but that's rare. There, but they are out there. Um, Let me ask you about the pensions because I've been contacted by, I'd say, about eight um, firefighters from different towns in Connecticut about them. Some of them taking their pensions over. How's East Haven and how does that work? Well, East Haven for us, we're actually in what's the, called the municipal B. Uh, we're in the state pension program. Um, it's what I hear very solvent. It's still it's still very um, um, a viable pension. Um, we're not in, in a town pension. Right. Um, the problem is when politicians, you, you know, when you have the requirement to have to put in, you know, put in the funding to fund the pension, but they decide not to, and they use that money for other things. Eventually, that money has to come from somewhere, and the pensions get into trouble, and. The whole pension debate is is a big debate that's coming up in the future. And I, yeah, I've, I've, like I said, I've talked to probably eight different firefighters right. you know, on Facebook, private messages, 
and some of them have moved from the town municipal to take their own over. They're doing yeah. much better. And they're in the black now. So I think towns that are suffering economically or or wanting to opt out. Opt out and you know, they've looked into they want to look into doing four oh one K type retirements for public service employees. Um, but I know at least I've heard that it's been looked into maybe with my job and when they crunch the numbers and put them together, by the time with a 401k when you do the match, and then they have to start paying Social Security because it's firefighters, police officers and stuff, we don't get Social Security anymore. By the time they do that, it comes out to just about the same numbers, and it's, it's, a more, and it's, and it's more of a hassle for them. So I, mean, I'm not, I don't know a lot about that, but, uh, you know, it's problems are coming down the pike. Without a good economy, without jobs, without people working, can't you, can't, you can't support it. You, you can't cannot, sustain you the support. support it. You can't sustain the support mechanism of education, fire department, it's, police department. Yeah, the start, numbers keep growing. It's starting to unravel. You know, we took, you know, my job, we took, um, the town offers, offered us a deal a couple of years ago, and then we took the deal, you know, because we were coming up for pension, for, you know, for contract negotiations. The, it was a one-time deal. The town said, take it, um, or, you know, that you know that's it. We took it. It was good for us. Um, it was good for the taxpayers. I haven't had a pay raise in three years, but I'm okay. It, times are tough. People, a lot of, not everybody, but the vast majority of these public service that I either work with or know, we know people. And well, I just said that because when you're running for office, and I've been out there for 11 months talking to tens of thousands of people, yep. I hear it doesn't do any good because you have it. Or you're running for office. You think, oh, you just want to get a vote. Right. That's why we're here today also. I can, I, right, out, right from the horse's mouth. People are hurting. People are hurting. It, it's, are. It's, uh, it's sad how, um, and we see it, you know, I see it first, first hand with my job. The pain and suffering people are going through. And it is, and I don't see it getting any better. Well, that's the thing. What I'm hearing is Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter as much as what's the plan to get us out of here. No one knows. Yeah. Remember, was in a lifeboat. We're gonna start throwing each other out of a lifeboat. There's no plan. There's no leadership. And not just because I'm running for office for right. governor, but because that's what I see. So I got in the race on every level, from a gun issue to you name it, constitutional cost. Um, it's people. This is why the polls are coming in so bad for the uh, current administration. And uh, we're putting our ideas out. But I thank you for being here and doing this because from the horse's mouth. It means ten times more than coming from a politician. I'm glad we have a candidate such as yourself. I, I'm telling you, you know, anybody, I'll look right at the camera. I'm telling you, people need to wake up. You need to understand what is going on. You can't stay on this path. It, everything is, everything's, everything is under assault. You, you know, you know, you may not own a gun. You know, you may not have a child. You know, so I don't care about the education system. I don't, you know, I don't care about firearms. But our entire way of life, the, everything from the NSA spying to, uh, you know, you pick a subject. Yeah, and, we're, and we're here at Yale University. We're here at Yale University, a prominent university in America, walking around just to see where the ideas are going to come from in the next generation. What do they have to say about it? So, so. that's all from Yale.